Hello everybody, Martin Petilla here, health coach at Life Enthusiast. We are restoring vitality to you and to the planet, coming to you across the airwaves and the internet. Today, I'm sitting here with Maria Kocha, and uh, we're talking about the health of the digestive system, the gut health, and the microbiome buzzwords that we have heard a lot of lately in the channel. I mean, we're plugged in. I'm listening to shows and lectures and whatnot all the time. So to me, it seems just the most obvious thing that, of course, everybody knows why microbiome is important. Of course, everybody knows what makes it better or worse. And then I talk to Mary and Mary <laughs> says, I say every time I talk to someone about this topic that I am shocked to, to just learn how little people really know about it. You know, we, we listen to this stuff all the time because we're really tapped into it, but there are a lot of people that don't really understand what the microbiome is and why it's so important. So, you know, I convinced Martin that he should let me just talk a couple minutes about it at the beginning of this, of this discussion, just, yeah. just to lay the groundwork for those who don't really understand. Okay, so so, micro so mm -hmm. please pretend for two minutes that I have asked you a question. Well, what is this microbiome, Mary? Well, the microbiome is what's in your gut, basically. There, it's a, it's a one-cell one thick wall of your gut lining, and then what is contained within that lining in your gut. And it's basically that though that one cell thickness is the only thing that's the barrier between you and the outside environment, the things that you eat, that you put in your digestive system. And the, the, the key about the microbiome is that all those little one cells are held together like this with these tight junk, they're, it's called tight junctions. It's like Velcro that hold the cells together. And there's been some research done by a lot of doctors and, and medical researchers that say that within 15 minutes of ingesting something that is, is, has either glyphosate or some kind of chemical in it, or it's a, 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 you know, a, a food that's been genetically modified in some kind, it takes about 15 minutes to destroy those little tight junctions. And where that's a problem is that those tight junctions are what's keeping toxicity out of your system. And so when those tight junctions get destroyed, the toxicity leaks directly into your bloodstream. And what's even more important is 80% of your immune system resides right behind, behind that gut lining. So every time those toxins leak in behind that lining, it's basically assaulting your entire immune system. So not only are, is your body fighting the toxicity, it's also weakening your own ability to produce the, the, the um, you know, those white blood cells that are actually going to be your, your first line defense against um, pathogens or things that cause disease in your system. So it's so crucial that you heal that microbiome. The, until you do that, you're going to have so many health problems, at least that's what all the recent medical research is showing. And my own experience in healing my microbiome, I started to really lose weight. I started to have enormous amounts of energy. Um, you know, of course, it, there were other things involved there, but the microbiome was a huge part of that. Right. Actually, there seems to be two different terms, right? One is the barrier, which mm -hmm. is that single cell thick separation. It looks like a stretch cellophane that's yes. holding the foreigners, where mm -hmm. then this is where the microbes that we know as the microbiome live, right? Like majority of yeah. the microbes that we carry within us live on the dirty side. The dirty right. side that runs between the mouth and the anus, that's where they are. And then there's that thin wall, single wall separation to the sterile side. And only sterile things should make it through that barrier. And if non-sterile things get through, that's where the warfare begins. Exactly. And warfare is a really good way to put it. We don't even know that there is a war raging, but when you start getting bloating and you start, you know, feeling really bad, that's the first place I would look to see if, if your microbiome is out of whack. All right. So we have microbiome. And let's uh, see, what do you tell people that wrecks their microbiome? Like, what do they need to worry about that makes it worse? Well, eating, eating the wrong foods, eating gluten, eating things with chemicals like glyphosate, which 
any produce that's that's grown in a non-organic um, fashion or it's or it's genetically modified are going to have a lot of these problems you know a lot of these genetically modified um, plants are modified so that they can they can spray the, the glyphosate on it and the glyphosate is is poison to us it's poison to our system of course the companies that are growing these these uh, this food it's more like you call it Franken food which always makes me laugh because it's really what it is it's not really food it's a food type substance that makes you feel like you're eating food but you're not but but you know the companies are making tons of money off of this um, you know the pharmaceutical companies are making tons of money because they're having to try to fix the symptoms that we're getting from it but we're our health is going down the tubes and you know there's a lot of research now stating that you know all diseases are on the rise, autism's on the rise, all of these things are being proven to be caused by an upset in your microbiome, pretty much. I mean, so, so this is actually the biggest breakthrough in medical research right now is the microbiome area. There are thousands of research papers being written on this every year now, and a lot of the pharmaceutical companies and other, you know, supplement companies are trying to understand how to uh, capitalize on this and we happen to be just one step ahead of it and that's why I wanted to really talk to you today Martin about all this because I've, I've had such tremendous success that I wanted you to share with people the products that we have that can help heal the microbiome right yeah I actually get quite amused when I see the advertisements on television where you see the belly doing the hula dance being happy and all of that and it's just because somebody took a yogurt that has two strains of special bacteria in it. And uh, lots of sugar, which actually grows the bad microbes. <laughs> I don't want to discount it. It's a purpose. <laughs> I don't want to totally discount it. I would like to say that there is a benefit to yes, the I microbes, agree. To, to, yeah. the, to the good ones. That the natural microbiome is very diverse. In fact, it should be said that the diversity as in the number of different species that live within the gut of the person is oftentimes the indicator. It's Very not true. necessarily the quantity, the weight, but more the diversity and the, yeah. the again, you know, fabric of life, mm -hmm. the, uh, the which, variety. Which really speaks to um, the strata flora that I've taken that's that life enthusiast sells because you know, when I've looked on the shelves in, in the health food stores, I've seen um, probiotics that have maybe eight or nine, if that, maybe five strains. And they may say we have billions of these in each, each capsule, but unfortunately it's billions of the same thing instead of having that biological diversity, like you're saying. So Stratoflora, to my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, it has 77 strains of probiotics but not just probiotics but prebiotics which are very important because the probiotics um, are very important but the probiotics will die off really quickly if they don't have food themselves so the pre prebiotics and then there's another element to that that we'll talk about in a minute i'm sure but but the probiotics have to feed off of that so it's almost like you know i had my son had two lizards and i used to have to <laughs> like feed the lizard something and then feed those things something. So it's like you, you have to feed these, these uh, microbes in your own gut in order for them to be what we call self colonizing or, you know, they, they will live and thrive in your digestive system and they'll be more effective if they have food themselves. Right. The important part for us to understand is that we humans don't actually digest anything the microbes actually are taking apart the food we've ingested and what they produce out of that is what we ingest. It's, it's a phenomenal thing. Ingesting something does not necessarily mean that you absorb anything out of it. It's the microbes that take it apart and make it available to us. And you know, that was a really surprising thing that I learned in talking to you and also listening to some of the lectures that you shared with me because some of these scientists are saying that we're only 10% human. The rest of it is a foreign, you know, subs a foreign entity that's like keeping us alive. And we just don't understand it. We think, oh, we're producing this, we're doing this. Why do we need all this stuff? No, we are actually very complex creatures yeah. that are, we're like, 
we're sort of like a, a, an, a universe of, of, of beings in our own bodies, but we think it's just us because we're the ones experiencing it. We don't understand all the things that are going on inside of us. It's really amazing. Yeah, I'm more like a traveling container for all these other species, <laughs> like a school bus. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the school bus and the driver, but <laughs> I'm carrying a whole load full of other But in people. the back are a bunch of crazy kids that are doing things that are really helpful for us. <laughs> right. But anyway, so you, you put two points out, and one was yeah. the probiotic. Yes, the probiotic yeah. is what eats the food that makes it available to me, but mm -hmm. they themselves require prebiotics, mostly fructo oligosaccharides, that they live on. It's a high fiber type of plant material that they require. But further to that, they require the humic or humus, the, the soil environment from whence they come. Mm -hmm. Of course, the most uh, basic of that is known as the humic acid. Humic got its name from humus, which is the same stuff as compost or soil, right? So that is the environment in which they thrive. And the environment electrically enables them to communicate with one another and uh, create a healthy, again, environment. It's an entire ecosystem that is interdependent. And when we throw it uh, with assaults, we cause trouble. Let me just mention a few. The most common one is chlorine, drinking chlorinated water. The second one you already mentioned is glyphosate. Glyphosate, or Roundup, has been used on all kinds of foods, and it's been sold to us as perfectly benign because it doesn't affect directly the mammals, the higher organisms. But it directly affects the microorganisms. So when we ingest it, even in small quantities, it's actually screwing up the microbiome itself. Well, And, and, uh, and then the other things would be... Uh, consumption of other chemicals, such as over-the-counter and prescription drugs, mm -hmm. including uh, birth control, alcohol, and uh, out-of-balance foods, like when you consume large amounts of carbohydrates, such as uh, high fructose corn syrup, flours, sugar. Right. Those directly feed certain subspecies of the organisms. We're well familiar with the term candida, candida albicans, yes. overgrowth. When mm -hmm. we eat a diet that's out of balance, it disproportionately feeds certain organisms and then creates imbalances that reflect in our health. And candida causes a lot of illness. I, okay. I, had, a, I had a dear friend whose wife died from cancer and they found an overgrowth of candida in her after she died and I, you know that was enough that was proof enough to me that i needed to get my microbiome in order <laughs> you know okay. and you mentioned cell, you mentioned communication one thing that i didn't mention in that uh, those tight junctions of between the cells and the gut lining is the communication piece because there are these little tiny fiber optic channels that help our cells communicate with each other and when the microbiome is destroyed cells can't communicate and so they're constantly working with each other to provide each other with the nutrients that they need. And without that communication, our, our, our body cells can't communicate as well. Right. And it's not just the gut barrier, but the blood brain barrier works exactly the same way. So if your gut is destroyed, your blood brain destroyer is blood brain barrier is destroyed. And if you wake up with a foggy brain and you're bloated, your microbiome is definitely not, not in good health. Yeah, we do say leaky gut, leaky brain. Yeah. And oftentimes we actually get the leaky brain symptoms first. Mm -hmm. We don't yeah, know. The brain fog. Uh, yes, the brain fog, the inability to recall things. The uh, Would you please hand me that, what you call it? That's yes. a sure sign of um, inability to uh, feed your brain cells adequately. Or you walk into a room and you can't remember why you walked into that room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, you know, so, and, and the brain, the thing is, you get foggy brain, but if it's just your memory, that's one thing, but your brain controls every function in your body. So to me, if you've got foggy brain and you can't think properly, then what is it doing to your ability to manage your heart, to manage your, you know, your, your breathing and all these other things? I mean, it really, it, it has to affect all of it. 
to put it in other terms, we need to support the ecosystem. Everything depends on everything else. Well, it's not everything, everything, but it's, it's that sort of thing. Like, for example, if I kill mosquitoes, that means that I've eliminated the mosquito larva, which is the food that the trout fish eat, and the uh, mm -hmm. other in-between steps that the songbirds eat. And so when I eliminate the insect, I have actually eliminated the food that makes the fish and the birds thrive in the nature. Well, it's that sort of interdependency that exists in our guts too. Yeah. And we When we make it out of balance or cause it to be out of balance, we create what we now call illness. True. And, and we have products for that. So we've got the Stratoflora, which we talked about a little bit before, and we've got the humic fulvic acid. And there's something that I've been taking called Tummy Love. Um, we do have the humic and the fulvic separately, and then we have them together in the Tummy Love. And I swear by these things. I don't go one day without taking them. And it's part of my, my health improvement program and why at almost 63 years old, people think that I'm in my mid 40s or, you know, a, at least a lot younger than I am. Depends on the day. If I've been really good on my health regimen, I, I look younger. And I can tell the day after I've done something I shouldn't do, it shows up immediately. It's just amazing at how quick, quickly it shows up. And so, you know, these are things that I really have learned to rely on and to take every day. To, to feel my best and to have energy. I have like the same energy that I had in my 20s and better probably. It's pretty amazing. Congratulations on, on <laughs> soon enough in your life that you can still enjoy a whole bunch I of know. years feeling great. But I mean, even if I had a health condition, I would still be doing this because I think one can reverse a lot of those conditions by improving what they're doing in their daily diet, you know, because the body is an amazing machine that knows how to heal itself once it has the raw materials to do that. Right. And I really believe that stratoflora and these humic and fulvic acids are part of the raw materials. Right. These are the basic basics. These are yeah. the cornerstones on which the whole thing stands. It like, is. You don't it's get the foundation. Right. right. The foundation. If you don't get this right, it's really hard to fix. I, I keep telling people, if you screw something up with your fork, it's really hard to fix it up with ointments and uh, I don't know what <laughs> pills. That's really wise. <laughs> we have covered the microbiome, why it's important. It's the cornerstone of all health and that we have the means to fix it. You need to fix the microbial make up the terrain and you need to give something to the microbes to eat and you need to keep the communication of the microbes going. And this is where the humic fulvic is important, as is the fructooligosaccharides, the prebiotics. Without that, no amount of probiotic pills that you toss into your mouth will make it work. That's very true. Well, thank you, Martin, for talking to me about this today. I'm very excited about it, and I hope that other people are as well, because it's made such a huge difference in my life. I just can't even believe it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This is uh, Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast. Website is life-enthusiast.com. The phone is 866-543-3388. We make it our business to restore vitality to you and to the planet. Thank you.